If Project 2025 starts to show its ugly head, which is very likely considering all of its backing, and it's almost certain that we'll have a Republican president by then that will go along with it, it will very likely make the lives of those of us who happen to fall under the LGBTQ plus umbrella quite miserable, forcing a lot of people back in the closet. I understand that some of the things that I say in some of my videos could be used by the other side. But I want to look at the situations as accurately as I can. I see a danger in front of us, and we have to be prepared for the kinds of arguments regarding legislation that are likely to come our way. They're not always wrong. They're right in a few areas, but just about everywhere else they're wrong regarding these issues. Once they bring religion into the picture, it automatically voids that part of the argument. Which is fine, considering that it's usually their biggest type of argument regarding these issues. Their whole groomer arguments aren't really correct either. I mean, let, let me explain. They seem completely disconnected from why these things are being taught in the first place. You know, they put a stupid twist on it. They think of these teachers as evil, as predatory, as trying to sexualize and confuse the kids and make them easier to exploit. And as I'm sure that there are the very rare occurrences of teachers getting off on that sort of thing, that is not the intention of the vast majority of the teachers that are teaching this stuff. They're honestly trying to help. They're trying to do the right thing. They're trying to be good. But good intentions don't always lead to good places. So, you know, with the exception of maybe classes that deal with literature, uh, appropriate literature, probably, right? I don't think elementary schools are... I don't know, it's even questionable as to mi whether middle schools should be teaching about the wide range of relationships, you know, the wide range of family structures, the wide range of gender theory, or the wide range of sexuality. It doesn't really matter if the intentions are good. Some of the results are freaking people out. Yeah, I don't see a way of reducing this, this outrage that people have without us just saying, yeah, okay, let's just not teach these types of things. Seems to be the best course of action. I just know that if we don't start dealing with the other side's views on sexuality and gender and a few other areas, if we don't start, and especially, you know, as it deals with children, if we don't start dealing with them in a realistic, logical, rational, non-emotional manner, then they will probably make things pretty miserable for us as Project 2025 starts to get implemented. If we're prepared, we might be able to effectively push back against some of these upcoming potential policies. But, you know, ad homs and name-calling isn't going to help anything. Even if we think the names we're calling them are facts, and even if they are facts, it doesn't really matter. I mean, if there's a word or a phrase you want to just keep repeating to them over and over again as a retort to what they're saying, you're losing. You're not winning. No matter how factual or accurate you may believe that word or phrase to be. Yelling at them and being extremely emotional isn't going to do jack shit either. The angrier we get, the more that they can just pass us off as just being over-emotional. You know, irrational and illogical. And the more that they would unfortunately be right. If we start heading towards terrorism and our side starts acting more like the worst sides of Antifa, you know, as a response to this stuff that's likely coming up, we'd be shut down even more quickly, and a lot of people would probably end up in jail or prison. These would not be good answers to what's likely coming up. We have a right to exist and thrive, and to do such, we can't continue to treat homosexuality and gender dysphoria and all the things that are under the umbrella of LGBTQ+, as if it's all genetic, as if it's all the way that we were born, or, you know, absolutely the way that we were born, right? Which, unfortunately, seems to be what the pride flag stands for. It stands for a strong belief without evidence. There's really no evidence, at least not right now anyway, that it's genetic. You know, we primarily have people's feelings about the subject, and that's not going to stack up against the types of arguments that are likely coming our way. As I've said in another video, I think most of the things that, uh, uh, why someone eventually uh, considers themselves under the umbrella of, of LGBTQ+, is because of a mental reflex 
to certain stimuli at a very, very, very young age or a lack of important stimuli. It's a reflex. It's not, it's not a conscious choice. It's a reflex. After someone reaches a certain age, it's pretty much an innate part of them. I mean, I suppose someone could go through some torturous things to try to change that sort of thing at a later age, but man, that just doesn't seem like that's worth the torture. But, you know, where is the water going to come from to put out this upcoming fire? How does one side who believes in things without evidence fight against another side that believes in religious things without evidence? I don't know, but I hope we can prepare ourselves. In the end, both sides are probably going to make some compromises, at least we can hope, and that things just don't turn to total shit for us, you know? We'll see what happens.